Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. This is episode number 534, and tonight we've got a lot to cover. We've got a lot to squeeze into mm-hmm. an hour and a half, and here we go. Uh, first of all, we're going to look at a couple of uh, 4K cameras. In addition to that, we've got a giveaway. We're giving away that great game, uh, Dead Effect VR, and uh, version 2. Dead yes. Effect 2 VR. And uh, we've also got uh, your viewer comments. We've got some changes on Patreon. And we're going to show you how you can find what files are taking up a lot of space on your Linux server. So much good stuff. And mm. here's what's coming up in the Category5.tv newsroom. Forget about working overtime in Japan. Now the drones are flying overhead, blaring the tune, old Lang Syne, in a blow to the robot delivery industry, San Francisco officials have voted to restrict where they can go in the city. Dan TDM has been named the richest YouTuber of 2017 after making more than $16 million this year alone. And we'll tell you what you need to know about a serious bug in TeamViewer for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Stick around. The full details are coming up later in the show. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Live recordings are trusted only to solid state drives by Kingston Technology. Revive your computer with improved performance and reliability over traditional hard drives with Kingston SSDs. Category 5 TV streams live with Telestream Wirecast and Nimble Streamer. Tune in every week on Roku, Kodi, and other HLS video players. For local showtimes, visit Category5.tv. Category5.tv is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Cat5.tv slash TPN and the International Association of Internet Broadcasters, cat5.tv slash IAIB. Welcome to episode number 534. This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm your host, Robbie. I'm Jeff. I'm Sasha. And I mentioned there that we are using Nimble Streamer, and a lot of times people hear things on the air, and they're just like, okay, yeah, moving along, moving along. They say it every time. What on earth is that? So let me just tell you a little bit about something that happened to us here at Category 5 this week. Now, there are a lot of things that happen behind the scenes that you may not know about. One of those things is uh, uh, somebody who has sponsored us for years that you may have never heard of. Their name is Siglacero. Now, I would encourage you to please check out their website, siglacero.com, and they provide hosting, streaming services, co-location for um, dedicated servers. If you want to host any kind of server at all, they're the folks to call. Now, they've been sponsoring Category 5 TV for years. What have they been doing? They've been hosting the very co-located server that runs our Nimble Streamer software. So when we here at the studio send a feed to that server, it then goes out to everywhere. So that's whether you're watching on Roku, Kodi, Plex, um, anywhere that you are watching, it goes through that server in order to get to you. So unfortunately, that sponsorship has dried up only because, now it's not something that we've done, it's, it's simply the fact that they're restructuring the company and now it's time to uh, move along. Now, understand that these folks have been sponsoring us and bringing you the live feed for years. Long time. Mm-hmm. Remember when we first introduced Roku? That's when it started. So what? Really? Think, yeah, so think wow. back that far and consider that every single week these folks have been providing our bandwidth and our streaming service. They've done it in the background. No, we didn't have to mention them on the air. We didn't have to do advertising for them. It's just they love what we do and they wanted to support us and our viewership. So that's come to an end. Sad. So this week, it is, it is absolutely sad, and, and we appreciate the folks over there. Pablo has been absolutely fantastic, quick to respond to emails and quick to solve issues whenever we've had them, but they've been old reliable mm-hmm. as far as our stream hosting goes. So with that, this week came the need to decide, okay, what are we going to do next? Mm-hmm. How are we going to keep doing this broadcast, Category 5 Technology TV, every Wednesday night live? 
And so we started looking at this device from Logic Supply. It's a CL100. It's a little micro server computer. And it's got a nice little kick behind it. It's got a lot of horsepower for a little tiny thing. A little bit bigger than maybe two Raspberry Pi computers side by side, okay. as far as the form factor goes. With this, now it's got Debian on it. Um, and I've been using it as a development server for our, um, our new version of NEMS, which is coming out. Uh, you can find out more about that at nemslinux.com. And so just as a test, because it's such a quick, okay, we've got to come up with a solution, I installed Nim Nimble Streamer on that hardware. Mm. So what does that mean to you? And this goes back to my question, what is Nimble Streamer? You hear about it on the show, you know that we've mentioned it, and we're actually going to show you uh, in coming episode, uh, in a coming episode, what it actually does and how to configure it. Mm -hmm. But what it does is it is the software that when we send a, a single feed, it sends it out to however many thousands of people are watching on any platform. So it, it makes it compatible. It makes our one feed compatible with Roku, Plex, and Kodi, and all that. So having had to reinstall this software, Nimble Streamer, what does that mean? One, I've got to install the current version. It's the one that right. was just released in November, um, so it's very, very current. Then I have to reconfigure all of our feeds. No. Yes. And I was a little bit, oh no. Right. You know, that's a lot of work to reconfigure. But here's the thing. As I was reconfiguring these feeds, so we got Roku, Kodi, Plex, all those back up. Our website, live.cat5.tv. Those four things now set up on Nimble Streamer. And then I got looking into some of the features of WMS Panel, which is provided by Nimble Streamer, and it allows you to configure it. And lo and behold, they've brought out the capability to now also simulcast to YouTube Live. No way! And simulcast to Facebook Live. Nice! Ooh. So if you're watching this for the very first time tonight on Facebook Live or YouTube Live, know that it is thanks to Nimble Streamer running on a Logic Supply CL100 little microcomputer that you're able to do that. That's that why I got that awesome. notice today coming into the studio. Sure, yeah. Yes. Going in the driveway, it's like, oh, Category 5 is live. I'm going, there you go. Ooh. So... <laughs> I think this is a great opportunity for us awesome. to branch. So, you know, it, it started out as a, a bad situation and, ah, oh, you know, these guys who have been supporting us for so long, yeah. bless them for doing that. Um, and now we've got to find another solution. Here we are. Nimble Streamer is still the software we're using to do it. Um, and that makes it possible to broadcast now on our website, live.cat5.tv, Roku, Kodi, Plex, Facebook Live, YouTube Live all at once Amish. from one feed. Now, further to that, one final comment about Nimble Streamer and how we've got it set up now is that if you go to live.cat5.tv during the live show, you're going to notice something has changed. Previously, you would have been getting the feed at 1080p. Okay. That's how we distribute the show. That's our feed. Right. Now, because of the way Nimble Streamer is set up and rebroadcasting, it's now using full HLS. One, you no longer need Flash Player. Nice. Oh, that's going to make so many people happy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Two, it's HLS. It is adaptive bitrate. What really? does that mean, Robbie? What does that mean? No longer do you have to watch in 1080p. If you've got a slower connection, it will automatically step down to 720p, 480p, 360p, right. 144p, all through huh. that service. Very cool. So again, Siglacero, fantastic company. We love them. Uh, please do support them. Go to siglacero.com and check them out. See if their services are for you. They're from Argentina, um, and they have been wonderful to us and to you indirectly if you watch the show live. They've been uh, the ones providing that for you. So for anybody who doesn't know, it's Siglacero, S-I-G-L-O-C-E-R-O. Yeah, there. there it is. I can, do, I can do the magic stuff. Well, I know you can, but... <laughs> I'm trying to help. All right. Try to help, man. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Okay, so speaking of our stream getting better and better all the time, we've been talking to our, our friends over at B&H, cat5.tv slash BH. They're a photo video store in the U.S., and they've sent us a couple of, of new cameras to give a try to, okay? Because we're looking at 4K. Products. Last week at the end of the show, I promised you we're going to be looking at a 4K camera this week. Well, sorry, I've got three of them, uh, and uh, we're going to show you just quickly. We're not doing unboxing or demonstrations.
demonstrations or anything tonight, so before you get ahead of me, just want to show you what they've sent. So what this is, is with a 4K camera, the intention is that we're going to be able to punch in on a 1080p cam uh, shot on 4K canvas, and we're going to get really crystal clear uh, view even when we're zoomed in. Mm -hmm. Beautiful stuff. So here in a studio, that's a great thing to have. So they've sent a few for us to look at. There's another, there's a JVC Pro Cam that's on its way as well. It's going to be here in about a week or two. Okay. Uh, but for now, okay, so we've got three different tiers of, um, of cameras. So this is a consumer camera. Um, it is a uh, FDR AX53 from Sony. These ones are kind of neat because they've got floating optics so you think okay. about a uh, you think about a stabilizer system yeah where you normally you'd have to have a pretty big heavy rig in order to get those really smooth shots well do you remember when we looked at the sony action cam and how great that was yes this yes. has got that floating optic so it actually moves inside the camera in order to get that smooth shot okay here in the studio, we're working on a tripod. Doesn't really matter to us, but it is a 4K camera at 30, at 30 frames per second. It's going to do a really nice job for us. We're going to try that out over the next couple of weeks. Then, in a little bit of a higher price point, but pretty similar price, mm -hmm. um, is a prosumer Panasonic. This one is the W. XF991, and I uh, haven't really gotten this one out of the box to take a look at yet, but looking forward to giving it a go as well. This is Panasonic's offering that's about equivalent as far as price goes, and again, it's a 4K 30 frame per second camera. And that's what we're finding with the uh, 4K uh, cameras, and um, you know, until you get into the twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollar range, they're all going to be 30, 30 frames. Shh. 30 frames a second is what you're going to get from 4K at this point. Right. Uh, we're not seeing 60p in um, uh, 60 frames per second in uh, the consumer kind of entry-level prosumer and entry-level pro uh, cameras yet. Then we've got another one from Sony. This is a big step up from the FDR AX53. Mm -hmm. This is the AX100, and this one is more of a professional camera. It, again, is 4K with 30 frames per second, um, and all of these have HDMI output, incidentally, so they can go into Telestream Wirecast and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to be looking at all three of these cameras, plus the JVC that's on its way to us. Looking forward to doing that for you. If you have any questions, you know, maybe you're in the market to purchase a camera, whether it be for uh, your own personal use or for studio, like here, uh, we'd be happy to answer those questions. We're going to look at things like comparing the uh, ISO components and the uh, F stop and how how good the picture is how well we can punch in at 1080p 720p and uh, so we've got a lot of exciting stuff coming for that kind of high-end consumer into the prosumer line of video cameras uh, which kind of transcends the studio environment and is you know for even you know you you want to take videos of the kids the AX53 is probably a great camera because right. if you're walking around, it's got that stabilization system to give you the smooth movement. And we're going to be looking at all these over the next little while. So cool save all your gift cards and Christmas cash. You're going to want to buy them soon. There you go. Cat5.tv slash BH. Show them some love for showing us some love. And we've got a lot of fun stuff coming for you. Okay, so we've got a brand new feature tonight. We are now showcasing our biggest fans on YouTube. You know who you are, you big fan you. I'm a big fan. You've commented on our videos too? I have. That's how we can gauge because when you start interacting with us, that's how we know that you're not just a fan. You are one of our biggest fans on YouTube. It's true. Super so fan. let's get right into it. First of all, Daddy Chase says, love the video. Please remove the overpowering music. What? It detracts and distracts. Oh. Hmm. Well, you better turn it off. I just wanted it to sound cool. All right, <sighs> Daddy Chase. Next up, we've okay, got let's one. Get a better one. Michael Hawthorne. Uh, what a dire channel. What? Three people presenting. The one on the right says nice at least three times a minute. The one on the left is sleeping. And what? The middle one is hyperactive. Sorry, what, what did you say? I wasn't paying attention. Apparently, this guy says nice three times a minute. <laughs> nice. This one sleeps. 
For the record, it looks like I'm sleeping. I'm actually like all the way in the chat room. I'm hyperactive. This is one of our biggest fans on YouTube, folks. So they know what they're talking about. Ooh. Kyle Nash says, stop calling it a back plane. Okay, so we'll Google this. Okay. Um, back, back plane. plane. Oh, a back plane is the back of a t-shirt. What? A, a back plane is when you have a back plane that you plug hard drives into or other components like the one we were demonstrating. Right. Thank you for pointing out that. <laughs> Graham Pinkton says, please learn how to pronounce S-A-T-A. S A T A. Are they expecting Sata? Well, they could be, or they could be expecting Sata. Either one would be acceptable, just like S A T A, which stands for, incidentally, serial A T A. Oh, would I... you say serial Ata? Or if you had an I D E hard drive, would we call it I D? Here's what worries me about this particular comment. Have they ever watched me in the newsroom? And any, <laughs> <laughs> any That's name true. of any city or town or village or anywhere? Serial ATA <laughs> has three accepted pronunciations. S-A-T-A. Sata. Sata. Not Santa? But in some circles, if you say Sata or Sata, you might get bullied. Apparently... According to our biggest fans on YouTube, if I say S-A-T-A, -S I may also get bullied. Nice. Um, Dead Zone says, noob! Can't pronounce S-A-T-A. L-M-A-O. So, um, look, pay attention here. Uh, we've already covered this. I, I'm, uh, yeah, okay. Virus Z says. Virus Z? Could be Virus Z. Okay. Maybe I want to say Virus Z. <laughs> oh, now we're going to get an old Canadian, American. Mm. Okay. Ugh. Let's okay. get into it. 446, the girl is green screened in. Why is she green screened in? First of all, I think we need to get the context here. Obviously, we're looking at a reference here to John 446, which says, Once more he visited Cana in Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine, and there was a certain royal official whose son lay sick at Capernaum. I'm not sure I get the reference. <laughs> that said, Maybe I, have we covered Bible verses? Why, why are you green screened in, Sasha? Well, because I'm on the moon. The wine. She lives on the moon, folks. That's she right. lives on the moon. Why would Sasha be green screened in when we are all green screened in? <laughs> I don't Just get saying. It. <laughs> so, for the record, for those of you wondering why uh, sometimes we accidentally reach out of frame, it happens. Right. There we go. It's because we have two different cameras. Now, to, for the record, hi, Sasha. Hi, Ravi. <laughs> And when I look at Robbie, it doesn't even look like I'm looking at you because we have two different cameras. I have to look at a chair in order to make I eye contact with Sasha. Fan and the, yeah. See, okay. these are all the things that, for some reason, I think people take for granted when it comes to making a show is that it's not always just a single camera. There's a lot more that goes into the show. Right. Like there's absolutely four cameras around me right now. Mm -hmm. And lights nice. galore. And a green screen behind each of us. All of us. Thank Although it only you. shows with me. <laughs> Mark A, the brick. Is it, hold on, is it Mark A or Marka? It's Mark A. A S-A-T-A, should we say it? Right? Uh, yeah. Will Vera says, I pay for YouTube Red so I don't have to watch stinking commercials. Your channel should be banned. Banned. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. You toxist bud, chomadakis. Dome, you didn't turn it on. <laughs> turn what on? Dome. <laughs> Dava 0007. Man, this is annoying. Shameless. I am sad too. I saw that thing. What? <laughs> <I am> <laughs> what on earth? <laughs> Mosin Ali Wahid. <laughs> Says, I thought this was Linus Tech Show. <laughs> Linus? 
Like, <laughs> like, 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 grab a blanket and stay. Linus Tech Show. <laughs> Linux is an operating system that we love. And <laughs> Linux Tech Show, linuxtechshow.com, is uh, part of the Category 5 TV network. So, welcome. I know you were looking for the Linus Tech Show, but this is <laughs> the Linux Tech Show with a slight. Linux, Linux bias. bias. Okay, yes. one of these. I'm, I'm okay. thinking like I'm thinking. I want a blanket now. Well, exactly. I'm thinking the next <laughs> like, Halloween episode. We're all thinking about the Charlie Brown I've Christmas. Yeah, special. Robbie could dress up as Charlie Brown. I'll have my blue blankies, Linus, is and Sasha could hold a football. You can go to kick it. I've got one more. I've oh, got okay. one more. Oh, okay. sorry. Yeah. We have another big fan. Another comment from one of our biggest fans on YouTube <sighs> who took the time to send this in to us. Kuda FX says. Almost everything about this video is unpluissant, <laughs> but the music made me rage quit. <laughs> We've already dealt with the music issue. What's unpluissant? We never figured it out. I don't speak French, so um, I'm assuming that's a French uh, that word. But thank you to all of our biggest fans on YouTube for taking the time to post your comments. We love the YouTube community. We know that you're all here with good intentions, as are we, and uh, we hope that you enjoy the show. We've got to take a really quick break. When we come back, we're going to be showing you all kinds of exciting stuff. First of all, we're going to be looking at how to figure out what files are taking up a boatload of space on our computer. It's going to help us so that we can hone in on those space hogs. Ooh. Stick around. We'll be right back. Christmas Child is one of the great stories that's unfolding in our lifetime. We are only seeing just the beginning of this project. And these children will change the world. Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Tonight, we're looking on our computer for space hogs. Pigs in space. Nice. I'm pretty sure there was like a Muppets episode or something. Probably was. Probably was. Space hogs are essentially files that fill up your hard drive. So, you know, maybe somebody on your computer has downloaded a couple of videos that are all four gigs each, and suddenly you're starting to find that that little 128 gigabyte SSD is running a little low. So tonight we're going to learn a couple of tricks, well, a trick on Linux that's going to show us how to figure that out on a server. Oh, okay. Or through the terminal. Why are we skipping right to the terminal? Why are we skipping right to the server? Well, back on episode number 401, we already took a look at a couple of different tools. First of all, we looked at um, a program called Space Sniffer, and that is a Windows tool that allows you to graphically visualize the space usage on your computer. Brilliant stuff. Now, we showed you on episode 401 how to now use Space Sniffer in order to um, find that same issue on a Linux machine right. using Wine, which we learned about last week so we no longer we don't have to look at the GUI we've already done that look at episode number 401 of category 5 technology TV but what I run into and what you may run into if you have Linux servers anywhere throughout your network or online is that hey you know what what do I do about my server when space starts getting eaten up where is all the space going so tonight we're going to look at a terminal command that's going to allow us to do that so over here on my computer I'm just gonna bring up putty and I'm gonna bring up uh, one of my Linux servers, which is going to allow us to show you uh, one of the ways to do this. So Putty allows me to log into my server from a remote location. This is just a terminal emulator um, that lets me in. So I'm going to log into uh, our gaming server, for example, and I'm going to become a super user. And here's the thing. A, a server does not traditionally have a GUI. Correct. And a GUI being like a desktop environment um, on Windows, that would be like the thing with your start menu. You're going to get somebody saying you said it wrong. It's GUI. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> um, so... Um, here on a server, I'm, I've got this remote connection and I'm going to bring up, uh, because I don't have a, a GUI, I, I can actually access it from here. Uh, so 
typically there are a couple of different commands that we're going to use. So we can go df-h, which is disk free, and that's going to tell me, hey, how many, uh, how many megabytes or gigabytes are available on the particular disk that I am looking at, um, or on a list of all the different disks in this system. And there it is. So there's my disk free space. So I can see I've got 9% use on slash. That's good. So now if I do a, a du-h, that shows me the disk usage, which oh, takes forever. Yeah. It's, it's going to show me the ultimate disk usage at the end. Let's go to home Robbie and try it there. Disk usage-h, this is traditionally how we do it on a server, right? So it's going through all my files and takes a little bit of time to find everything that's there. And at the end of the report, it's going to actually show me a tally of how much disk usage there is. Now, I can sort that by the biggest files, and I can go through that kind of hoopla, but there is an easier easier way using n curses. Okay, so this shows me a tally at the end if I were to allow it to keep going. But n curses is basically a interface for the terminal that al allows programs to have a bit of a GUI, a bit of an interface that's beyond just text-based. So the program that we want to use is uh, is an n curses program that is uh, disk usage for n curses is n ncdu i believe so ncdu try that it says ncdu not found so let's install it apt install ncdu and hit enter and now it's grabbed it so if i type ncdu dash dash help now i should see uh oh it doesn't even have a help let's see ncdu oh it starts scanning immediately crazy but I want to show you how I can use this tool in my terminal on my server to be really, really quick about it. So ncdu, and then you can specify slash, and it will show you the, uh, the usage um, on slash. But I don't necessarily need to do that. I'm just going to go home slash Robbie. And there's another thing that I want to do. And this is why when, when I run these commands, you see that it's running a little bit slow. Because I've got a lot of mount points on this, ser on this server, and it's yes. connecting out to other servers. So I want to say, you know what? I only care about the built-in hard drive and the hard drive that I'm actually using right now um, in a slash home slash Robbie. So I do dash X. And what that does is it says only scan the media that is the same as home uh, slash Robbie. So I'm going to ignore any Samba shares, CIFS, and that kind of stuff. Hit enter, and now it scans everything. And almost instantly now, I see a report. And again, NCurses allows me to navigate this with the keyboard. Uh, I'm going to just kind of move up here. Now that I'm zoomed in, you're not getting a full view. Um, there we go. There, so that's what it looks like on my screen. I can uh, I can navigate that with my keyboard going up and down. So this is a mind test gaming server. So uh, obviously we've got a lot of maps on there. So in my case, I can go there and I can see, wow, survival servers using 6.7 gigs. Uh, our dome server is only using one gig, and I can navigate that and see where the file usage is actually happening. See how much faster that is, and easier than using something like DU. It's just like instantaneous. So mm -hmm. that's a great tool for you just a quick and dirty Linux tip for you if you're running a Linux server anywhere on your network grab a hold think n curses disk usage so ncdu is the tool that you want to install you want to run it as root so that it doesn't have any sharing uh, any violations as far as permissions go you want it to be able to scan all the folders on your computer and then you use ncdu dash x we learned about that, and then where you want to check. So slash would be your entire hard drive, um, or slash home slash Robbie is my home folder, and go about it that way. That is NCDU. It's available. Just as you saw there, you can install it on Linux with apt or yum, however you want to install it. Okay, Good Sasha, times. we're going to head over to the newsroom if you are all prepared and I ready to go. I am ready to rock. Here are the stories we're covering this week in the Category 5.TV newsroom. Forget about working overtime in Japan, now the drones are flying overhead, blaring the tune Old Lang Syne. In a blow to the robot delivery industry, San Francisco officials have voted to restrict where they can go in the city. Dan TDM has been named the richest YouTuber of 2017 after making more than $16 million this year alone. And we'll tell you what you need to know about a serious bug in TeamViewer for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere.
Whether you shop on ThinkGeek, GearBest, B&H Photo Video, eBay, or Amazon, or even if you want a free trial of Audible, you'll find the best deals and support the shows we produce by simply visiting the shopping sites you already frequent by using the links on our website. Visit Category5.tv slash partners for the full and ever-growing list and help us create more free content like this show. Thank you for shopping with our partners, and thank you for watching. This is the Category5.tv newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. I'm Sasha Rickman, and here are the top stories we're following this week. Since World War II, Japan has been, has been struggling with a world work culture that consists of excessive overtime. To curb that behavior, one firm is planning to use drones that fly around the office blasting old Lang Syne to get employees to realize it's time to go home. The system, developed by office security and cleaning firm Taisei and telecom giant NTT, will see drones patrolling the office on a scheduled flight path. The drones will also record footage of what they see during the flight to identify employees who remain in the office after standard work hours. It may see, sound a little silly, but something must be done. A white paper released last year found that one in five Japanese people work an average of 49 hours or longer each week. From those, thousands of workers die each year, most of whom are only in their 30s and 40s. The victims die from various illnesses such as heart failure, exhaustion, stroke, starvation, or suicide as a result of work stress and depression. Of the drones, the director of the program says, you can't really work when you think it's coming over any time now. So what is Old Lang Syne anyway? It's a tune that typically plays in Japanese malls to announce that the stores are closing. Taisei will trial the system in April 2018, targeting a monthly fee that works out to about $450 for companies to use this service. Hmm. hmm. This is an so, interesting tactic. This is not a Canadian problem. <laughs> a, drone, a drone that is flying around with a giant speaker. I'm more concerned. I'm not so concerned about telling people that it's time to go home as what is your workload like? What's making you this workaholic, if you will? What's making you stay such yeah. long hours? Well, a lot of it is cultural to a, to a certain extent of, of just that productivity, that performance, that, right. that honor aspect of, you know, I'm a hard worker. I've, I've got a few friends from Japan, and that's one of the things that they do um, struggle with is, you know, I don't want to be the first one out the door. Right. I, 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 mm -hmm. You know, I want to show that I'm committed to the company. How much of that is, it falls on the employer's shoulders, though? Like, if, if right. you have a, an employer who's pushing you to meet quotas and, and giving incentives that are unreasonable in order to make those incentives... Well, obviously, these employers aren't thinking that if they're willing to buy a drone sure, to yeah. fly around playing the song that only plays here once a year. Yeah. <laughs> but here's what I find interesting about it. Instead of somebody walking around saying, hey, listen, thank you for your work get out of here it's a drone like how impersonal is that It'll, how big is this factory that they need a drone i'd like to know Maybe it's how a teeny drone. obviously they're not going to listen to the drone like that's just the way it's going to go so what are they going to do they're going to buy like like jibby's headphones and they're just going to pop them in your ears so you, you can, hear can hear something it? else yeah right what that's, i find interesting is the fact that it's also going to record what it sees so are they going to like is this oh we caught you on camera not leaving you're suspended? I feel... Uh, the no. foo is saying, well, these are salaried workers, but then it brings me back to, well, what if you're trying to meet quotas in order to right. get incentives, like I, a bonus or something like that? I don't know. I feel like I would have picked but, a different song, like the Macarena or something. Uh, <laughs> or... Your way out the door. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Copyrights. Copyrights. Crazy. All right. In a blow to the growing robot delivery industry, San Francisco officials have voted to restrict where their robots can actually go in the city. Startups will have to get permits to use such bots, which will be restricted to less crowded urban areas. Opponents are concerned about the safety of pedestrians, particularly elderly people and children. Walk San Francisco, a group that campaigned for pedestrian safety, wanted a complete ban. 
A range of companies have begun trialing small robots that can deliver food and other goods. They use sensors and lasers in a similar way to self-driving cars in order to navigate their routes. Robotics company Marble, which describes its machines as friendly neighborhood robots, began testing in San Francisco earlier this year. Other companies such as Starship and Postmates are also keen to use sidewalks for robot deliveries. San Francisco Supervisor Norman Yee, who originally proposed a ban on such robots, has previously said that the city's streets are for people, not robots. Despite its proximity to Silicon Valley, San Francisco is falling behind other states such as Virginia and Idaho where there are already laws permitting delivery robots to operate. So... Uh, Give robots what? a chance. <laughs> like, yeah, come on. Yeah, like, I just feel like, well, okay, so the sidewalks obviously are going to be used for pedestrians, but how many pedestrians are there? It's not like pedestrians, I feel like, are in the minority anyway. Most people drive cars. Even still, we're talking about a robot, a robot that is basically benign and stays clear of humans and yeah. drives at six miles an hour. Well, and, and I have to wonder, like, we're talking sidewalks. I don't know about anybody else, but I have yet to find a sidewalk that doesn't have bumps and cracks and, lead, like, ledges that you could trip on. And uh, are, like, They're worried what, about what the, the robot the ro causing the problem? Well, no, I'm yeah. just, like, if a robot comes into an obstacle where maybe they can't get oh, over no. it, how does this... Oh, they'll get over it. No problem. But yeah, I mean, like, the six-wheeled um, machines that they have right now, they're, like, the size of a cooler, and they've got six wheels, and they just kind of crawl up over, like, a Land Rover. Huh. No problem at all. They get up the curb. Nothing. Right. So, my question is, if they already have these robots doing deliveries in the other states, have there been incidents where no. there's been concern? There's been no Nothing incidents. that I've heard of anyways. But Nothing I haven't. Yet. Okay. Personally. And even if there was, like, you know, like, you bump into someone on the street, and, you, oh, excuse me, sorry. Right. At least here in Canada. <laughs> I like the idea Fair of enough. these delivery robots. I want to know, like, do they deliver just, like, is it the mail? Because there was one that was post bots or something. Uh, there was, is oh, it groceries? So Pizza? somebody loads. Oh, I Medicine love it. for the elderly? <gasps> you think about an elderly person. Them. So take, take it, you know, okay, well, we're worried about the elderly folks that are walking down the sidewalk. Well, right. put, flip it over and say, what about the elderly person who can't go out to get their medicine or their groceries? And now it can be delivered by one of these robots that they just open the door and uh, open it up and it's there. I, ha I have an idea. I have a solution. Mm -hmm. I've got this. Are you listening, San Francisco? This is going to work. Okay, so you know how in the on the roads you have like a, a car lane and you have a bike lane <laughs> a on the bike side? Lane. <laughs> so a why don't we lane. have on the sidewalks, have a little robot lane? Mm. I, I think it's perfect. I think we're still trying to get into the whole bike lane thing. Not everybody's a fan of that. Uh, the likelihood of them jumping on board a robot lane before a bike lane. But again, know. these robots travel at about the same speed as a, a human pedestrian. See, what's interesting about this, though, is we're talking about robots that are on the ground. Everybody's talking about drone technology. Wouldn't it just solve the problem to have drones? Doing but this can, this can handle something that's a lot heavier. That's um, true. Delivering, like, pizzas and, and full Could grocery orders. Could a person orders. stand on it? Sure. You sure, should just hack not? the system, you pedestrians. Like, just stand on well, the that's one, one of the fears, too, is that they're worried that what if they get vandalized by, you know, because they do only travel, like, at a snail's pace. So, you know, what, what if they do get vandalized or someone breaks into them and that kind of stuff? It's, a, <gasps> it's another concern. Or underground tunnels. I don't know a lot Lots about of the... That's Google's idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the topography of San Francisco, but if you could do underground tunnels, then... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you seen like, some of those roads? <laughs> People don't want to be walking up that there hill. I feel like... Bring it on, robot. Bring not, it to me. Yeah. I, I just don't feel like there's probably a lot of pedestrians out and about. I don't know. I don't see a lot of them. I am facts, one of them. Facts, Sasha. Facts. Okay. Cite, cite your statements. <laughs> I've never been to San Francisco. Everybody I'm who's sorry. watching this on their phone while they're walking down San Francisco sidewalks is going, what? <laughs> Sasha doesn't know me. So That's sorry. it. I'm going to comment on YouTube. I feel like <laughs> I want one of these robots to deliver things to me. Even if I were to go to the grocery store because it's heavy carrying the things back. And again, sure. I've said that I'm, I am a pedestrian. I'm not a robot. Um, I would like to be able to just have a companion robot bring my things home with me. I would Perfect. like that. Yeah, it's about the size of like a baby carriage and it's about um, like they call it ottoman height. So think about an ottoman, how high they are. Yeah. Pretty, pretty short, like knee height. I kind of think they're perfect. Not going to lie. There you go. What do you think? Comment <laughs> below. Let us know. <laughs>
All right. We know how I feel. All right. Dan TDM has been named the richest YouTuber of 2017 after making more than $16 million this year alone. Wow. Yeah. The 26-year-old from Aldershot, England, started off simply making videos of himself playing Minecraft and Pokemon. His face is in the corner of the screen, and he adds humorous ongoing commentary as he plays. He's got more than 16 million subscribers and more than 10 billion views of all of his videos. The YouTuber, whose real name is Dan Middleton, did not feature in the top 10 list last year. Dan TDM's recent live tour included a show at the Sydney Opera House, which became the second fastest selling show in the venue's history. He started posting videos which were aimed at viewers under 10 years old. At the time, he was also working at a grocery store. Dude Perfect also made the list with about $14 million in earnings. PewDiePie dropped to number six with $12 million. And six-year-old Ryan earned more than $11 million reviewing toys on his channel, Ryan Toys Review. Back in November, Dan TDM said that he wasn't prepared for the fame he got from being a YouTuber. He said it is intense being a role model for young people and is st something he is still learning. So the most shocking for me is probably the fact that he does live shows. <laughs> how do you... <laughs> On stage. How? How do you do that? So I think it's I, a lot of fun for kids because, I mean, the, the kids are watching the shows on YouTube. It's like, like when we used to watch Sharon, Lois, and Bram mm -hmm. or, you know, Mr. Dress Up or, right. you know, any of these shows. So I went and saw Ernie Coombs in, in theater and he did magic stuff and he did the dress up thing and he, you know, everything else that you, it, it was just fun stuff mm -hmm. So to entertain children. So Dan TDM and other YouTubers that are focused on the, the child audience, right. uh, Dan TDM in particular is doing exactly that. He's pulling out his guitar and strumming along and making mm -hmm. the kids sing along to a video that's playing behind him and, you know, doing all kinds of things, doing magic tricks, doing games that are interactive with the audience. Right. right. Because your daughter uh, ended up with a contest or a contest of some sort with a sketching with him. Mm -hmm. Did she not? Uh, she was on Dan TDM's show. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. She's the host of um, uh, the Pixel Shadow. If mm -hmm. you go to mindtest.tv, you'll see that. But um, yeah, she was featured on on his show. Good you know, on him. Like all of these these people on YouTube that are doing these shows and making all of these you know crazy dollars. <laughs> Ryan is nuts. six six years old. Six. It's insane. He's just living the dream. Well, ah. it's funny. I mean, as much as I find this absolutely incredible, I also look at it and go, they're just doing a video and they're getting paid this insane amount of money. Like this six-year-old kid who does the reviews, he's just opening up a box and getting excited about a toy or whatever it is. Yeah. It's, it's his <laughs> parents that are raking in the cash because even though it's his YouTube channel, he doesn't have the legal authority to actually oh, sign sure, up but for it. Realistically, but, it's, right. it's a team effort, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. But it, it's just, I, I, I find it so fascinating that something like just one person's video can catch on and it just goes nuts. Ah, uh, yes. We actually have banned Dan TDM during the day in our house because our son is homeschooled. And oh, yeah. we have found that there are times where it's okay, you're going to do your math and we're going to go take care of this. And we come back and oh, look, he spent 40 minutes doing Dan TDM videos instead of doing his online math. It's like, okay, fine. So <laughs> we have his feed blocked during the day. Wow. The Foo, uh, again, in the chat room below, uh, is commenting about how you have to be 13 years or older to have a YouTube channel. Correct. And so on and so forth. But keep in mind, like my daughter, um, we started her channel when she was 9 or 10. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's me, it's dad that's setting it all up and creating the account and making sure that the, the nasty YouTube uh, comments are deleted before she sees them and those kinds right. of things um, to the best of my ability. And same with Ryan. is It's going to be his folks that are really, you know, they're the ones who are buying all the toys and making him review it but right. here's the thing he's a he's a clever kid yeah and that's it that's what it boils down to dan tdm is a clever kid he's come up with something that's unique and he's doing a great job of it and he's found a niche and he's kept it up mm -hmm. and right. ryan's the same he's just he's a funny kid who just who's uh exuberant and and outgoing and and I, that's what makes him popular i would also like to point out that this all happened in one year which yeah. means yeah, Robbie, 2017 that's okay it. so ryan's a six-year-old kid who opens boxes of things and gets super excited about it 
Robbie, you are a grown kid who opens boxes of things and gets excited about them. I want to open more boxes. That's right. This is the way it's going to go. <laughs> that's how that's how we get rich. We open Tw- boxes. That's right. 2018's yeah. list. Here we go. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. <laughs> Team Viewer has issued an urgent patch to fix a vulnerability that allows users sharing a desktop session to gain control of another PC without permission. This vulnerability affected versions of Team Viewer running on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux machines. Team Viewer is a popular remo- remote su- support software for desktop sharing, online meetings, web conferencing, and file transfers between computers over the internet from anywhere in the world. To establish a connection between a local computer and a remote computer, the local computer requires the remote computer's ID and password to gain control over the remote computer. A critical vulnerability was publicized by a Reddit user last week, linking it to a proof of concept that was published on GitHub by a user named Jelen. Team Viewer acknowledged the existence of the vulnerability after it was publicly disclosed. The proof of concept showed how a user could modify Team Viewer permissions with a simple DLL, which controls naked inline hooking and direct memory modification to change Team Viewer permissions. The code can be used on both the client and the server side, allowing the malicious user to gain control of the presenter's session or the viewer's session without permission. Those users who have configured Team Viewer to accept automatic updates will get the patch delivered automatically. However, it could take up to three to seven days for the patches before the update is installed. Those who do not have automatic updates set will be notified when an update is available. Mm, danger. So for anybody who's listening going, what's a DLL? Mm-hmm. Robbie, what's a DLL? Oh, just like, <laughs> Robbie, did you, did you, <laughs> dynamic link library. Um, did you say it wrong? What? I don't think so. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> um, here's the, uh, so Windows, in order to um, reduce uh, resource usage to make things load faster, uses what's called a dynamic link library. They are files that are shared among other applications. So these files can be opened by that application for certain functionality within Windows. Mm-hmm. Um, so if one of those DLLs contains a hook, then it can be uh, used to exploit um, any kind of, you know, whatever the program or the hacker wants to put in there. Okay. Right. Now, what about naked inline hooking? Because that sounds like something you'd see on a roller derby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, inline hooking is like when a when a program, in this case, a malicious program, okay. um, hooks into one of those DLLs and overrides some of the bytes of the code so that it will now load something else. Okay. So in a function, so if let's say to keep it really simple, um, you know, when I click the file button, it pops up the file menu. Well, that's a function. So if I can hook into that DLL that opens that file menu and make it also execute a malicious program in the background, then all of a sudden I've got something happening that is not intended by the software developer. That's kind of what's happened here. Um, They've been able to create a hook that hooks into one of the DLLs that allows reverse access without permission right by is overwriting it, the permissions is it always super obvious if you have team viewer like could somebody install team viewer on your computer without you realizing oh, it or sure, knowing yeah. it uh, so team viewer is a great application for um remote support a lot of technicians use it um sometimes like if i'm helping you out sometimes i'll mm-hmm. use team viewer to remote in and, and connect and help you out um but uh, you know who commonly uses it are those folks, um, the fake support callers. These, right. are the, these are the folks that call you oh, up yeah. and say, you know, hi, this is Microsoft calling and we're here to help and we've, we're going to remote into your computer and fix this virus that's going around and patch your computer. And some people fall for that. You may not, but some people do. Uh, Microsoft doesn't call. Neither does your bank. Neither does, you know, they, <laughs> they don't ask for access to your computers ever. Uh, red flag. So... When they do that, they need a tool in order to do it, and sometimes what they'll do is they'll maybe use something else, and then in the background, while while they're connected, install something like TeamViewer or something else that, Mm -hmm. uh, but that's not related to this DLL issue. This is, uh, you know, something that you just need to watch out for is, hey, this is being smart. It gives remote access to your computer uh, from, you know, someone else. Right. Yeah. And now that it's public, right? So so a lot of times when there's a problem like this, Mm -hmm. it stays kind of in the background for so long. But now everyone knows that it's there. So make sure sure that you, like, 
you update and that yes. the patches, you know, actually are applied to mm -hmm. your program. And this affects all the uh, platforms of mm -hmm. TeamViewer, as far mm -hmm. as I know. Like, so Linux users are as susceptible as a Windows user mm -hmm. in this particular instance. So, yep. And it's a great tool, but sometimes these kinds of things can happen and they're quick to update it, but you need to update your software in order to get that fix. Exactly. Thanks, Ravi. And big thanks to Roy W. Nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us this week. Thanks for watching the Category 5.tv newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And for more free content, be sure to check out our website. From the Category 5.tv newsroom, I'm Sasha Rickman. Thank you, Sasha. This is, Cat this is Category 5 Technology TV, episode number 534. Welcome to the show. We've got to take a really quick break, but when we come back, we're going to be talking a little bit about Patreon and some of the changes that are happening yes. there. Also, we've got a winner for Dead Effect VR. You want to stick around if you've cast your ballot. Uh, we've got maybe, maybe it's your name. And if you haven't cast a ballot, we're going to tell you how you can do that. And, uh, well, we've got a lot to cover in just mm -hmm. a short amount of time before the end of the show. So stick around. We'll be right back. Jeff Weston. Yaman. Yeah, you're building a brand new beautiful website. What? Aren't you? No. Am I? Oh, you're a terrible actor. What? This is where acting comes into play. Oh, I didn't know we were acting. You're supposed to act. Okay, fair enough. All right. yeah, I'm building a really cool website. Are you building a really cool website? Just because Jeff is confused doesn't mean you have to be. Visit cat5.tv slash dreamhost to sign up for unlimited web hosting for your website with unlimited email accounts, MySQL databases, the latest version of PHP, WordPress, and more, and even a free domain name registration. It's less than $6 per month, so sign up today. cat5.tv slash dreamhost. <laughs> Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Now, if you are one of our supporters on Patreon, a patron, then you probably already know the information that I'm about to share, but I want to share it with you just so that everyone's aware. Now, we've had a lot of different changes on our Patreon page over the past couple of weeks. One mm -hmm. of those is that our patronage is now monthly. So if you're a supporter, you need to really quickly get in there and change your pledge. Because, for example, if you right. used to give a dollar a month, or pardon me, a dollar a week, now it's a dollar a month. Right. So what used to be a $5 per month contribution, it is now only a $1 a month contribution. So right. there are very good reasons for why this change has taken place. It's going to really help us to be able to provide some great exclusive content to our patrons. I'm very, very excited about this. We've got our vlog. We've got seven episodes up already. Mm -hmm. uh, more episodes coming, and that's happening on a regular basis, but only our patrons have access to that. And there's some other stuff there for patrons as well. Head on over to Cat 5.tv slash Patreon and you're going to find out all about that. Uh, one of the things that has happened over the past couple of weeks is Patreon sent out an announcement saying that they're making some changes to the fees. Yes. Right. And that stirred it up. And I even heard Big from time. a couple of our viewers and our patrons, Bill reached out to me and said, what are your thoughts on this? And I said at the time, you know what? It's all about building our community. And if Patreon makes changes to their fee structure, I hope that our patrons will understand that and know that the funds are still helping us out, out a great deal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it is building a community, right, kind of an, a community within our community uh, of patrons. Now, today, just a few moments ago, uh, an email went out from Patreon. So if you haven't seen this, you need to know Patreon has, in fact, apologized for their announcement about making these fee changes. Yes. They have reversed it, and they've said, we are not going forth with those fee changes. We're going to look at this take a different approach. We're going to figure out how we can make this work, but we are not going to do what we announced a week ago. So keep in mind, if you were a little put off by Patreon's announcement about the fee changes, it has been reversed mm -hmm. and it will not be going forward. 
our patrons have access to things like our vlog, uh, exclusive behind-the-scenes videos, and we've got some swag for you. So if you're a patron and you have not received your swag yet, make sure you get onto our uh, Patreon page. I posted about how you can get that, um, and we've got a cutoff date of January 31st. It's coming up. Um, yeah, so you've got to make sure that you follow through with that so that uh, I can get that out to you. We're starting our first shipments this weekend. So really excited about that as well. Good times. Giving away stuff. Jeff, yes. you want to take it? Yeah, okay. You're, so You love games. I do love games, and it pains me that I can't win this because I'm part of the show. Oh, Jeff. <laughs> but I, I, well, every well, week I will happen. just you hope. You could, too. You could email. Uh, yeah. Do it. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Do it. Okay, so <laughs> we, we're giving away a code for Dead Effect 2 VR. Now, the way it works is you need to email contest at category5.tv and let us know where you're watching from and how you're watching. So maybe you've got your Roku hooked up to your main TV. Uh, maybe you sit there and watch on your phone. YouTube or, or Facebook, Facebook Live. Live. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Or maybe like me, you watch it in person. Right. Not a lot of people in the uh, in studio audience tonight. Well, I already have a copy. I, I, what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's true. She asked me for one, and I gave it to her, Jeff. But you know what? <sighs> Somebody else now has a copy. Oh yeah. Me? Who is our winner this week? Our winner this week is Bob Gray. Bob Gray, congratulations! Well done. Watching from Roku, from Grants Pass, Oregon. A USA. Nice, and Bob actually sent us an email. Jeff, you want to yeah, tell us what Bob sent? So Bob says, I've been watching for a couple of years, and due to random work schedule, I work retail and my hours change weekly, I s I'm seldom able to watch live. I agree that the Orville is fantastic. Mm. When I saw the uh, previews prior to the series launch, it looked interesting, but now that it's available on Hulu, I've been watching it, and I'm an ardent fan. Loving your show. Keep them coming. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, thank you very much, Bob. Uh, we also, the game. Uh, yeah, congratulations on the win. Now, if you would like to win, uh, get your ballot in, again, Jeff mentioned it, email contest at category5.tv. We got an email from Malcolm. Malcolm says, really enjoying the show since I discovered it a few months ago. We knew something, oh, who knew something like this existed from Ontario? Mm -hmm. I actually stumbled upon it when go, uh, doing a Google search to use Handbrake. This is DVD ripping software. Um, I uh, needed uh, to get a second of a DVD into Pro Presenter for our church's family night, and until then, I had never even heard of Category 5. Who knew that this has been going on for over 10 years? This past week, I tried the online version of a phonic. We showed that a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and wow, what a difference this has made to the recording of our pastor's sermons. It seems like you're always covering some kind of day-to-day -day content of which you have experienced yourself, and that just makes it so much more personal and applicable. Keep up the great work, Category 5 team. That nice. came to us from Malcolm. Thank you very much for the comments. We appreciate that. That is a true fan. Thank you, sir. Indeed. <laughs> and I like that it's, hey, who knew something like this from Ontario existed? And, and it's true because you've got mm -hmm. some great shows out there from other areas of the world where you typically would expect this kind of stuff to come out but you know for some reason people just don't expect little I, old Ontario. Yeah. A lot <laughs> of great did, podcasts out of Hollywood. I did have one run out, run in with somebody who's like you look so familiar. Oh yeah? Was it and then mom? it took a little bit no. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. It was your husband. <laughs> <laughs> Where do and I then, know you like, from? You are from Robbie's show. So there oh, you yeah? go. Oh, yeah. Robbie's show, not Sasha's show. Sometimes, I, aren't you from Robbie's show? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I had it happen once where I was in a grocery store. This is years ago now. but Oh, and I had it happen at KFC. That was the best. I went to the KFC drive through and they recognized me at the drive through Really? They said, you're that guy from TV. And they gave me free chicken. Yay! Nice! So, you know, being a YouTuber obviously has its benefits. Robbie got free chicken, you yeah. could get free dead effect too. There you go. See? <laughs> <laughs> I like how you just tied that right in there. But you've got dead effect too. You got free chicken. I... You are awesome. I'll, I'll tell you a joke. I get coffee. Like oh, really? Yeah. Uh... How many tickles does it take to make an octopus laugh? I'm going to assume the answer is not eight. Ten tickles. Oh, oh, a pun. We have just been banned by the Great Firewall of China. 
Oh, wow. Sasha. All right. And that is how we're ending episode 534. Wow. <laughs> Folks, if you are new here, if you haven't seen this show before, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, even if, you, if you've been here before, I hope you enjoyed it as well. But please let us know. Comment below. Send us an email off of our website, category5.tv. We would love so much to hear from you. Next week, uh, we're all going to be here. We've got a lot of fun stuff going on around here at the studio. And uh, I hope that you can join us as well. So until next week, you take care. Have a good one. Good night. I'm just going to tell a joke a week because I'm hilarious. (laughs) Well, Garby liked it.